English cricket team over there on the far side, lying around the pool on the back side there. That's a very small investor on their tour. For Mike Gatting's English cricketers on their tour of South Africa, it's a day of rest. As they soak up the five star comforts, Gatting's team knows that two weeks into their controversial tour, they'll face tomorrow their strongest opposition so far. On the field, they'll take on a South African 11, and off it, the local Stop the Tour committee has promised Gatting his hottest reception yet. Back at their hotel, Gatting and his team play water sports against their police bodyguards. The English cricketers and the South African security men have forged a common bond. Although his tour has become caught up in the momentous changes that are convulsing South Africa, Gatting insists that he's only come to the country to play cricket. A Surrey hotel was the secret rendezvous for Gatting's team last month on the eve of their departure for South Africa. Gatting, the accident-prone former England captain, has admitted that he doesn't know much about apartheid. He's to be paid £200,000 for leading the team to South Africa. Your opponents are saying, as you well know, is that, that you are mercenaries taking the blood money of the apartheid regime, supporting apartheid by going. Well, um, there are a lot of other people working over in South Africa. There are a lot of other sportsmen that go to, for example, the uh, Sun Million Dollar Classic that they play out there every year. Lots of money going to that. Million dollars for the first prize and, and the golf the classic. Golf classic. Um, there's a Grand Prix that goes on down there. There's tennis matches, there's squash matches. I know apartheid is a bad system, uh, a very bad system. Um, but as I say, at the end of the day, lots of things go on in South Africa. Uh, people trade day in, day out. There's not a total sports boycott. If there was, then I could understand uh, the fact that we should be banned from going there, but there isn't. 15, 16, 17, 18. Limbering up in the hotel's private conference room, all but one of Gatting's 16 man squad are test cricketers, and most of them played for England last year. Okay. By the way, lads, Peter Hayne has just labelled you all as has beens, thickos, and just up there for. Anything else apart from anything else. They're so all thick and all has been. Among the squad are three of England's top fast bowlers Graham Dilly, Greg Thomas, and Neil Foster. Foster, like the few others in the team who've never been to South Africa before, rejects the label mercenary. I mean, obviously, we, we're getting paid good money to go. Uh, so, to a degree, as I say, we've expected those tags to be laid with us. I mean, I don't feel I'm a mercenary. Um, I feel I've got a right to play cricket where I, wherever I want. And uh, the people who would uh, prefer me not to go are really sort of, they're not doing what they, they say they want in South Africa. They're not allowing a democracy to take place. Does it worry you, some of the sorts of things that have been said about you and the other tourists, uh, that, that um, it's blood money for the apartheid regime, that you're mercenaries? Uh, I wonder if that sort of thing worries you. No, no I mean, not at all. Um, I'm a professional cricketer. Basically, these people who are saying this, they aren't going to tap me on the back and say, well done for not going, and, and offer X amount of money. I mean, we're going, I've got a young family now. You know, it's going to help for the future there. Um, I, I, as I say, I just can't wait, you know. I'm just looking forward to playing the cricket. I'm just going there to do my job. Um, I can't get any employment here in the winter playing cricket. So if somebody offers me a job playing cricket in other parts of the world, um, the chances are I'd go and take it. While the Labour Party accused the cricketers of filling their hands with blood-stained Krugerrands, in Johannesburg, the man organising the campaign to stop the tour is Krish Naidu. A politically skilled lawyer, Naidu has the ear of Nelson Mandela, whom he visited in prison. Naidu heads the National Sports Congress, which is backed by Mandela's ANC. We consider this cricket tour to be an act of racism. It is against the wishes of the majority of people in this country. 
and uh, it's against the sports moratorium imposed by the international community. For those reasons, we have decided to uh, oppose this tour by active participation in demonstrations and other means, and uh, we've pledged to abort this tour. Ironically, the man who set up the Gatting tour, Dr Ali Baka, is a committed opponent of apartheid. A former Springbok cricket captain of Lithuanian Jewish origin, Baka passionately believes that cricket can bring the races together. Convinced that Mike Gatting and his team could become heroes to young black cricketers in Soweto, Baka secretly recruited them. One has had to go in a clandestine manner around the back door to get players to come to South Africa. And if there's no tours, there's no money, this has been our problem from day one. So you need international stimuli, you need contact, you need motivation for your players of all ages, of all population groups. You need new heroes, you need to maintain standards. So it was a cricketing decision. At their Surrey Hotel on the day of their departure for South Africa, Gatting's men discussed behaviour and discipline on the tour. David Graveney, the tour manager, asked what the players' attitude should be if Nelson Mandela is released while they're in South Africa. Bill Athey responds, Nelson Mandela can't bowl, can he? It's pretty fairly sensible. It's going to be a very, very hard trip. You're all grown up enough to know what you can, what you can't do. We really must all work together, stick together. And those that aren't playing have got to help out as much as they can. And uh, on days when there's hot, sweaty jock straps to be hung up out in the line, try and give us a hand if at all possible. I think we'd be At a press conference before the team flies off, Gatting is asked how worried he is about the prospect of violent demonstrations against the team in South Africa. Well, we had demonstrations in the West Indies when the, West in when the England team were out there last time. I'm sure there'll be demonstrations when we how get out there. How much are they there. paying you, Mr Gatting? How much are they paying you to go to South Africa? What's the blood money like in South Africa? You're going to get a nice new car out of this, Mr Gatting. You're going to get a yacht out of this, a second home, Mr Yachting. You're going to get lots of uh, nice uh, perks for the rest of your life on the backs of the blacks of South Africa. Uh, have you heard that saying, one rebel, one bullet, Mr Gatting, in South Africa? What do you make of that? How concerned are you about the threats that have been made um, for your the party's safety, the one one rebel, one bullet, people yeah. saying there will well, be deaths fairly, and... You know, we can't get more sort of uh, <laughs> direct than that sort of statement. And you sit, uh, or all the players have either read or sat in front of TVs with their wives and families, and you, you it's a weighty responsibility then, because you know that no matter what you ever say to your wife, that it doesn't remove that nagging fear at the back of your mind that it, that it could happen. Uh, and we would be inhuman if we didn't think that way. But at the same time, whatever we read or see is countered by uh, undertakings or uh, from the South African Cricket Union that our safety would be OK, or was paramount. Well, I sincerely hope there isn't bloodshed. I can't believe that uh, by shooting 16 English cricketers who are touring out there will do their cause any good whatsoever. As they arrive at Heathrow for the 13-hour flight to Johannesburg, the players are given a villain's farewell. An anonymous caller claiming to have planted a bomb on board delays the flight for a further three hours. The next morning in Johannesburg, Mrs Winnie Mandela leads the protest at the airport where the English cricketers are due to arrive. Demonstrations have recently been legalised in South Africa under strict conditions, and the police decide that the anti-tour protesters are gathering illegally. The police want no filming of their action. As the cricketers arrive, a number of anti-tour protesters are suffering from dog bites as well as from police tear gas sprays and beatings with batons. Gatting and his men, who now face a five-year official ban for agreeing to play in South Africa, head off for their airport press conference. Mr Gatting, as part of his defence of this tour, Dr Ali Baka has said that he hopes that peaceful demonstrations against it will be allowed. This morning at this airport, the police dispersed the demonstration Dogs bit protesters, they use tear gas and batons. Are you happy about that? 
Well, obviously, we weren't here at the time of the demonstration, and obviously, we hope that demonstrations will be peaceful. Um, obviously, um, we're unhappy that uh, if it was a peaceful demonstration, that it was disrupted. But I'm sure the SACU will take it up with the authorities who are concerned. Tor has no right whatsoever to take place. The oppressed people of this country and the African National Congress are calling upon these rebel Tories to leave our country. One of Johannesburg's luxury hotels, the Santon Sun, is where Ali Baka has booked in the team. The players were to have gone to the Holiday Inn, but at the last minute, Baka switched hotels in an effort to confound the anti-tour protesters. Oh, yeah, this is the line. I've never done this before. I've never been on a line. <laughs> For a few hours, the threats by the anti-gassing organisers to make the lives of the tourists a living hell seem hollow. But at their first net practice, there are constant reminders of the security surrounding the players. <coughs> Jess and Robbo, get some pads on. At the Nets, Ali Baka claims that the momentous political changes which government ministers have warned him to expect in South Africa will divert the protesters' attention completely away from the tour. I just feel confident, I mean, you know, that common sense will ultimately prevail and we'll end up having a cricket tour. And that in uh, February this year, you know, the thinking of the country will be on when the, the ANC and the Nationalist Government will sit down and talk resolve once and all the problems in this country. The staff at the team's hotel demonstrate against the tourists. As the black hotel staff now refuse to serve the players food or collect their laundry, the cricketers will have to rely on the services of the hotel's white managers. But at Ali Baka's home on their first weekend of the tour, there is some food laid on for them. When he first announced the tour, Baka said that Gatting's men would go and coach young black cricketers in the townships. And at the barbecue, they meet some of the Africans who are working for Baka to bring cricket to Soweto. <laughs> In Soweto, shortly before the Gatting team arrived, Baka's three-year-old cricket in the township scheme reached its high point. White children have been bussed into Soweto for the opening day of the new cricket stadium, built with funds raised by Ali Baka's South African Cricket Union. No! No, no! Ironically, Baka's multiracial cricket schemes are now threatened by the Gatting tour, which Baka himself organised. No! One of the great tragedies of South African society, and certainly in my opinion, it really borders on a criminal uh, system is a discrepancy in fields and facilities that are available to all South Africans. And I just hope that what we've been able to put together today will be the start and the forerunner of providing for all children in South Africa the very same, same facilities that I as a young child was fortunate enough to have. I know of course that there are arguments which are being placed now that we must allow cricket to go on with this rebel tour because Dr. Ali Baha and his colleagues are beginning to teach us cricket in the townships. But precisely because Ali Baha wanted this rebel tour, he organized some money 
and put together these kind of groupings in the townships so that he could mislead the world into believing that there is integrated sport in our country. We will only accept international cricket in this country the day there is complete and total integ integration of sport and equal facilities for all. Hands up! With the protesters threatening to use every method at their disposal to disrupt the tour, Gatting prepares for the first match amid the strictest security precautions. The razor wire round the cricket square at Kimberley, where Gatting's team will play their opening match, provides graphic evidence that in South Africa, politics and sport cannot be disentangled. Bakker has chosen to begin the tour in conservative Kimberley, as he believes black opposition here will be at a minimum. As the players arrive at their hotel in Kimberley, it's clear that Bakker has badly miscalculated the strength of the opposition. The protest organisers demand to put their views to Gatting face to face. You must know we do not respect your toy here. So you better go home. We are suffering and we want you to go home right now. Thank you very much for your words. You came the wrong time to South Africa. Thank you very Wouldn't much. Wouldn't you wait another two years? Or three years? All right, thank you. Okay, okay. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you very much. You and Ali Baha and all that, you must know. You must know. We knew, or I knew, that there was going to be a lot of pressure brought to bear on us. And obviously, uh, my name as captain was going to come to the forefront. It's something that I knew was going to happen, and it's something that I have to accept. Um, at the end of the day, as I said, we've come here to try and play some cricket, to um, try and encourage people to enjoy the game, and hopefully for people of all colours to enjoy the game. A pro tour demonstration, albeit somewhat smaller, was outside Gatting's Kimberley Hotel the next day. Mike Gattings is the first England team to play at Kimberley in a quarter of a century. And on the field, the cricketing opposition promises to be not too testing. But in the township outside Kimberley, Anti-tour protesters set out to march to the ground. They do not have official permission to demonstrate, and as they're stopped at a roadblock a mile from the cricket ground, nerve ends become frayed. In an attempt to defuse tensions, Krish Naidu, the Stop the Tour organiser, arranges a meeting at the cricket ground with Ali Baka. Baka has himself been negotiating feverishly behind the scenes to obtain the protesters an official permit to demonstrate. I mean, you know, it's a volatile situation down there. We want peace. And uh, we think that you're the only person to rescue the situation now, to give us access to our right of peaceful protest. Right, and do you accept the right of people who want to watch cricket, that their rights should be protected? Well, uh, we, we are here to answer for peaceful question. protest. Uh, answer that question. Those please. rights will be protected. Well, we are not here to, to harm anyone. Answer that question, No, please. we think they have that right. Yeah. But some of the demonstrators have lost patience. Frustrated by the police roadblock, they've turned back into Kimberley, determined to give vent to their feelings. Ali Bakker uh, had to go and apply for a permit for the, uh, the demonstration. And he came over a couple of obstacles which took two to three hours to sort out. 
uh, and I think the crowd got a bit restless and they went on a rampage in the streets and they smashed windows and, and uh, hurt some innocent bystanders. And again, uh, I don't see why that should be attributed to us because uh, it was just a man trying to do everything he possibly could to allow them to demonstrate and they've gone and just gone totally wild. As they clear up in Kimberley, Ali Baka's three hours of telephone calls to cabinet ministers and meetings with local officials have at last borne fruit. The demonstrators are now officially allowed to come to the ground. Ali Baka has succeeded in obtaining their permit to protest against the cricket tour that he has organised. But the protesters must remain behind the barbed wire outside the ground. Neil Foster records the protest for his album. The protesters respond with stones after a beer can has been thrown at them from inside the ground. But further violence is avoided to Ali Baka's profound relief. Overall, I think it went off particularly well. It was a tense day. It's the first time ever that we had demonstrators outside a cricket ground in South Africa. And demonstrations in South African life is a new phenomenon. And I think it's a learning experience for all of us. And I think we're, all of us will learn from today's activities. Uh, but overall, I am quite happy at the end of the day's play. Have you had any chance to see any cricket yourself? <laughs> no, what's happening out there? No, not at all. <laughs> but in the township that night, the skills that Baka hoped to develop for cricket are put to use against the police. The police respond with tear gas. After a series of skirmishes, the protesters turn their attentions to the house of a black policeman. At the match, the spectators have seen Gatting in the form which makes him one of England's best modern batsmen. Oh. Gatting's team go on easily to win their first match, and there are none of the threatened pitch invasions, with the protesters kept penned outside the ground. But a hundred yards from the ground, the scene had been less peaceful. The police use what they called low-velocity rubber bullets. Have you any view on the distractions which you know about now, which happened off the field? Well, as far as I was concerned, there was a few people singing and dancing, and that was it. I didn't uh, know that anything else happened, and we were more concerned with playing the cricket than anything else. When the journalists report Gatting's singing and dancing quote, they hear back that Neil Kinnock in London has said travel is supposed to broaden the mind, but in Mike Gatting's case it seems to be having the opposite effect. I'm certainly not out here to narrow the mind at all. I'm certainly out here to learn a lot more about it. And perhaps, uh, you know, if he came out here and perhaps learned a bit about it himself, as we, we're doing at the moment, um, he might well believe uh, otherwise. Have you had the chance to see anything that, that has changed your mind? No, not particularly, because we haven't been allowed or haven't had the time, in fact, to go uh, perhaps into the townships. A police helicopter was on the lookout for demonstrators at the next stop on the tour, in Bloemfontein, the seat of the Court of Appeal and the centre of South African justice. A group of anti-tour protesters had been turned away from the ground by police and were making their way back through the city when the police decided that they formed an illegal gathering. The police then moved into the township outside Bloemfontein to prevent demonstrators marching to the ground. A police video unit was sent in to film any trouble. 
which quickly came when protesters stoned a police car. In the ensuing pitch battle, police used tear gas and shotguns, and the township responded with anything that came to hand. The police officer in charge of security operations for the Gatting team, General Roy During, accepted that the cricket tour had brought increased unrest to the townships after months of calm. Well, it has been calm for, for a reasonable time now, but I think that um, anything will be used, and this, I think this is a, a, a beautiful forum for them to, to be used by radicals. This is 1990. We've been patient since before the turn of this century, and this tour can only assist to maintain the order of things in this country. My getting knows what he's doing. He is a criminal. And perhaps South Africa will pass his judgment on him in the future. Manda! Manda! Well, the, the surprising thing, I think, is that most factions over here um, all want the same thing, uh, yet they're all going a, a different way about it, which is confusing things. And I think, uh, from what I've from my speakings to people and talking to people. They all feel that it is a time for change. Perhaps it wasn't the right time for the tour. We don't know yet. At Bloemfontein, demonstrations have eventually been allowed outside the ground after Ali Baka has once again secured a permit. Gatting agrees to meet the protest leaders. To his surprise, they produce an injured young man. The anti-tour campaigners claim that the man has been shot by police on his way back to the township after protesting at the ground. You want to make it clear, as I said, that there are 18 other people who have been shot. 18. 18. Gatting's view is that what happens in the township has nothing to do with the cricketers. That is in connection with us, which has been very peaceful. What happens in the township on the way home, nothing to do with us. Gatting's style of diplomacy is starting to worry some of his teammates. Well, I just don't think it's reasonable that Mike should put himself in that situation. Um, and that was when I, I actually sort of really had a go at him, um, just generally about how I felt he was putting himself on the line all the time. And I don't actually think it's doing us as cricketers any favours. What was his reaction when you had a go at him? Well, he, obviously, he feels in a, in a situation where he, where he wants to do everything. He wants to... Um, uh, make sure the demonstrations go off properly and, and he wants to make sure that the cricketers play properly and at times he's put himself in a situation where he can't win so I told him okay let's go open it up. from Bloemfontein the team moves south for Peter Maritzburg two weeks into the tour physical fitness remains the cricketers priority that was good oh thank you but have the newcomers to South Africa seen anything to change their minds Gravely says that he's been moved by the demonstrators' songs. And it's a very emotional experience, you know, the freedom songs from a sector of the population who believe that they, they need to be free, and, and there isn't too many people in the world who would argue with that. Um, but I think they're also aware of, you know, they see the police, water cannons, dogs and things like that, and they know that it, would only take, it wouldn't take too much for things to go seriously wrong, so they're just hoping that common sense prevails. So, I mean, that's always at the back of the players' minds, as, as, as they I think they it certainly is in the back of my mind. I spend more time watching out the window how the, what's happening with the demonstrations than I probably do watching the cricket at present, but that's only, a, that's only a human reaction, I suppose, at this time. There has been unrest in the townships, and, and it's blamed on um, the tour being over here. Well, I think that's wrong. Um, I went up in a helicopter um, with a the police sergeant and, and he was saying that they get violence in the townships anyway um, obviously the tour being here is a good excuse for everything to be blamed on us have you have you seen anything uh, that has changed your mind about coming here I haven't seen anything at all no. have you yourself seen anything that, that has changed your mind about um, coming here no nothing at all no but have you had a chance to see anything? Well, as I say, as I said before, we've all we've done really is practiced and played, and, and we haven't seen anything really. Um, we've seen hotels and cricket grounds, and that's it so far. Gatting himself tries to keep up with the news of the momentous political changes that are convulsing South Africa. He hopes that the heat will be taken out of the demonstrations against the tour by President de Klerk's announcements of radical political reforms and the imminent release of Nelson Mandela. These decisions by the cabinet are in accordance with the government's declared intention 
to normalize the political process in South Africa without jeopardizing the maintenance of the good order. One would hope that um, they would have lots of uh, singing and dancing to do for other reasons now. Uh, that they have got what a lot of what they wanted and they can go on and sit down now and talk with people to uh, produce a new South Africa. The team sets off for the third match of their tour at first light. They're optimistic that de Klerk's speech will have switched the political focus away from them. But the anti-tour campaigners are limbering up for a long, hot day of protest. By far the largest demonstration of the tour so far sets off for the ground. Inside the ground, there are only a few hundred spectators, while outside the advance guard of the 4,000 anti-tour marchers have arrived. The demonstrators demand to deliver a petition to Gatting. As the pro-tour pressure group Freedom in Sport heartens the white spectators, the protesters stage a modern morality play. Hello, students! My name is uh, Mike Gadget. <laughs> uh, students, I've been sent here. I'm telling you to come and teach you how to play cricket. <laughs> you will be paid more than your mothers and fathers are paid. I'm telling you. Once you play cricket, three days, 8,000 rents. In the dressing room, after a hard morning in the field, the captain wants a lunchtime siesta. The delegation out there, um, we're calling to meet you uh, now. Yeah, well, obviously, uh, it's going to be difficult because we're playing and that, but uh, I'm sure after we finish in the, in the field, we'd love to see them. Not a problem. But it's another five hours before the end of play, and the crowds outside are growing impatient to see Gatton. The police general in charge of the cricketers' security tries to cool the protesters. If my captain wants to cre uh, create chaos here, he must stop. He must refuse to come here. But if he doesn't want chaos, he must come here and receive his king, and then he goes back. Mm. Yes. It no, will take more than I five minutes. What are these air cars on a position to threaten people like that? That's not fair. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. At tea time, after a good session in the field, Gatting decides that he'll go out immediately and meet the protesters. Whoa! Why getting? 
Gatting tells the protesters that the tea interval is over and he must get back onto the field. situation where we were sucked into a confrontation. It was almost like going to a guillotine there. We got into the change room there and somebody said, Captain, 10-15 uh, minutes, we've got to have a rest. He says, no way, I'm going onto the field. It's an unusual way to spend the tea interval at a cricket match. Well, he, uh, I think he's a remarkable person. Uh, and it is controversial, the tour because we caught up in the politics, the crossfire. I mean, read the morning papers here, the uh, statement by the National Sports Congress. It's not a sporting issue, it's a political issue. It's a, it's a fight for ultimate political control of this country. And that's and we're an easy target, and a soft target. And I would have thought for somebody from England, it must have been a very frightening experience. Um, but the demonstration was peaceful, and he showed, I mean, extraordinary courage is not the word. This was, was nothing, it was a child's game that they are, they are complaining about and now they are saying that he's a hero. But he is lucky in a lot of sense that the organization and the discipline exposed by the, protect, uh, by the marches was an excellent one. Right? And I think uh, Peter Marisberg and the cameras can, can record, yes we had one or two inc in incidents, but on the whole uh, they got in there safely. And it is expected to have one or two stones thrown around given the volatile situation. It's been quite a day. Yeah, it's been an interesting day. Um, haven't had too much luck on the park, and uh, obviously the short tea interval we had, um, uh, but we've ended off on a good note, so that's uh, nice. Have you ever had a tea interval like that before? No, not quite, especially when you hear your summons uh, ten minutes before the, uh, the tea interval is actually going to start. But um, obviously, as we've said from the outset, we want to keep the demonstrations peaceful, so I was happy to go out there and uh, do the right thing. It's something that uh, we had to expect, I think, at some stage. You know, people are rather hot out in the sun, I should think. Um, they probably lost their temper a bit, but uh, again, we, we've done what we've had to do. And how did it feel just coming out and taking the field again immediately after all that? Oh, fine, just missed my cup of tea, that was all. <laughs> Let's say grace. God, our Father, we thank you for Mike Getting and his courage and his determination and, and for all the people with him. And now we pray that you will bless us and bless this food to our use and us in your service. Amen. Back in Johannesburg, the Cricket Lovers Society of South Africa gives a dinner with Gatting and his team, the guests of honour. The man Gatting expected to skipper the South African side against him makes the speech of welcome. I think with Mike Gatting, him and I have quite a lot in common. We've both been county captains, we've both been national captains, and we've both been sacked. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I do thank you sincerely. We've had a, a warm welcome from you all here this evening. Um, I'd perhaps just like to put Clive right on one point. Um, I've got sacked as England captain twice. <laughs> Outside the British consulate in Johannesburg, demonstrators have a petition for Mrs. Thatcher as Gatting's men prepare for the first unofficial test match against South Africa. The question here is for Margaret Thatcher to summon Gatting home. Gatting must go home. He's not wanted in this country. The car is not wanted in this country. The people of this country do not want this car. Margaret Thatcher must have a son getting to come home. The consulate demonstration provokes the police. I think we have to play six batsmen. Can you go with six batsmen and four seamers, or six batsmen, three seamers and spin? I agree. I agree.
Well, I disagree. <laughs> sure, too. <laughs> you know. At their hotel, White Star served the Gatting team at their dinner on the eve of the match with South Africa. Yes, please. Yes, please. There's a test match going on, and you lot are guzzling like it's going out of fashion. Grouse, just beware. <laughs> Gentlemen, we have got a big uh, game on tomorrow. As far as I'm concerned, and I'd like it to be, we are playing, as far as I'm concerned, for England. And that's the sort of spirit I want to see when we go out there tomorrow. They're going to be G'd up tomorrow, and I want to make sure that our boys are G'd up too. And that means everybody. Because I don't particularly want to lose out here. There's lots of people watching. There's lots of people that want us to lose. There's lots of people that want us to see our noses rubbed in it. You've all worked extremely hard over the last three weeks. And I don't particularly want to see it all go down the pan straight away. The all-white South African team bowl first. On a vicious wicket, Gatting's men are playing up to the standards of recent official England test sides. As England lose wickets, in the Johannesburg township of Alexandra, school children have taken a day off and plan to demonstrate at the ground. But the police have other ideas. The police make a request that filming stop. At the cricket ground, the police general Roy During is kept in radio contact with events in Alexandra. He offers a reassuring version of the police action. Alexandra, there was just one incident where a um, lot of two school children were to be transported to town and um, they were stopped and turned about. There was no incident whatever, they went back to school where they should be. What, they were stopped by the police? That's right. Um, peacefully as far as you know? Peacefully, entirely peacefully, yes. After just two days cricket, the English 11 is facing defeat. Everything now depends on a captain's innings from Gatting. As the captain fails to trouble the scorer, a group of protesters, limited in number to 50 by the police, demonstrate outside the ground. We are dying! We are dying! We are suffering! We are suffering! Fight across the missing link in society. Sport isn't politics. And we wish they just bloody will realize it, man. What are they demonstrating for? Anyone on there starving? That would be the day. But you know what they want? They want a black government here. Same as Rhodesia. After just 10 minutes at the ground, the police have moved on the 50 demonstrators. When the police insist that the protesters stick to the agreed route for their march, they stage a sit-down. The police have their canisters of tear gas spray at the ready as their commander declares the sit-down illegal. You are permitting in our fence, and you will be forcefully dispersed. It is now 12.55. You have therefore one minute to disperse in the park. Within 10 seconds, the police move in. I have the Mr. Naidu, what happened to you? Naidu, who had been tear gassed. Sick people. <laughs> But you, you, you only had 50 people on, on the march. You only allowed us 50. But you said at the start of it you were going to stop the tour by the time it came to Johannesburg. The tour had just started, so there were eight matches to go. I'm still bent on stopping it. But shouldn't, if you were going to stop it, were, shouldn't you have stopped it by the time it reached Johannesburg? Well, just, you know, conditions differ from area to area. We don't want people getting killed over a cricket tour here. That, that you could see the killer instinct in the policeman's eyes today, you know. It was frightening. 
Yeah, I mean, we've asked, asked the police to, to be uh, as sensible as possible. Um, and they've said they'll only try and keep it within what they think is the law. But obviously, uh, from what you've said, they've obviously got a little bit carried away again, which is sad. The demonstrators have persistently coupled their anti-gassing protests with calls for Nelson Mandela's release. There's Mr. Mandela, Mr. Nelson Mandela, a free man taking his first steps into a new South Africa. Mandela is released in Cape Town two days before Gatting and his team are due to fly there. Mandela's wife had been at the very first airport protest when the tourists had arrived. And while still in prison, Mandela himself had told the anti-tour organizer Krish Naidu of his outright opposition to the Gatting tour. We've said publicly after the release of Nelson Mandela that the demonstrations would now be trebled against the cricket tour because it was a visible uh, representation of apartheid. And, being, and our task being to eradicate and destroy apartheid in this country, we, we said that the demonstration would be trebled. So if anything, it, it would have boosted the uh, level of demonstration against this tour. Ali Baka was now faced with the classic dilemma of a well-meaning white liberal. He realised that the Gatting tour was sabotaging his scheme to bring cricket to the townships, and he feared for the safety of Gatting's men when they arrived in Cape Town. A bomb had exploded at the Cape Town cricket ground a few hours after Mandela had endorsed the armed struggle, but Baka didn't want to give in to the threats of violence. He summoned an emergency meeting of his cricket board. Can you tell us what you've decided? No, sorry. Will, will, will you be a statement, Ali? Will be a statement? No, no statement. As an electric storm raged over Johannesburg, Baka was locked in all-night negotiations with Krish Naidu and the ANC. Under extreme pressure, Baka agreed to cut short the tour. The tour was becoming more and more divisive. This polarizing people's viewpoints, opinions. Uh, it was causing conflict and confrontation, airports, grounds, disturbances at the hotels. We were now going to embark on a coastal tour into areas of South Africa which are you know, very hot politically. And one, at the end of the day, one had really had to take a judgment. And the board took this judgment that, you know, that politics was just overriding this tour. Well, it, it's a victory for, for non-racial sport in this country. Uh, it, it's the first time that a tour has been stopped in South Africa. And uh, I think the victory lies in the fact that uh, white sport now are now seriously reviewing their positions uh, and realizing that uh, the time has now dawned upon them to sit down with black people and find ways and means of removing the obstacle of apartheid in sport. It's just sad because things are, we, we felt might just settle down after the, uh, the speech by Mr. de Klerk and, and the releasing of Mandela. We thought that perhaps things would be allowed to to pass by and, and the tour would would not be the focus anymore. It's been something I'll never forget. It's been very interesting and I've learnt a lot more in probably two weeks about a country than I'll ever do about England. And it's been very, very interesting. Do you think you've been an innocent abroad? Certainly been an innocent. Um, <laughs> um, a well-used innocent person, possibly, although people might not agree with that. Mike Gatting can now reflect that while he's been in South Africa, the political ground has shifted under his cricket boots. And he now knows that despite spending three decades in jail, the 71-year-old Nelson Mandela can bowl.